How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Chaos Child. I almost said wonderful every day. That's a that's a different mind fuck that I'm already done with. But yes, welcome back to Chaos Child. Uh, the last episode was pretty much the aftermath of a couple of our main characters wandering into a murder scene, which was uh, not gonna lie, still kind of creepy. But that was a really fun episode. That I just couldn't stop playing. I just had to keep going because I was that into it. And I probably won't shut up about that episode. It was really good. So, uh, Takaru, I, I think that's his name. I, I don't play for a few days and I forget everybody's names. Uh, he's trying to stay calm, collected, while also being a curious boy. So he's online looking at the news. And this was the private news site I trusted the most. It was always updated at midnight every day. The quality of the news and the reliability of its updates made it far more useful than TV or the mass market sites. Online news was faster than TV, but of course some sites were better than others. There was no end to the number of wrong siders who would treat the net as a single entity that was the opposite of TV. The TV says one thing, but the internet says something different, they'd say. If you asked me, they were utter morons. These days, even a lot of the larger sites online aimed for the same mass market that the TV news did. It was critical that you would find out for yourself which sites could really be trusted. Just like the name implied, Shibuya News dealt with the goings on around Shibuya. It was similar to our newspaper club that everyone in the club knew about the site and used it regularly. Its owner, K was, uh, how, how to say this, very skilled at getting and sharing information and seeing its effects. She carefully calculated when to send and when to receive information. A lot of child and grandchild sites used Shibuya News as their parent site. Most of them were privately run news sites as well. As a result, a huge number of people saw the information that Kay spread. To put it more unkindly, Kay was manipulating them. Anytime Kay wrote about a popular shop among high school students in Shibuya, or a free smartphone app, I would hear people at school talking about it within a few days. Take for example the Twitter user that most of Hekiko Academy followed, Hekiho Bot. It described itself as a bot by Hekiho students for Hekiho students. But from the number of times it would show up on Shibuya News, my guess was that it was actually run by Kay. Kay was one of the few people I recognized as a right-sider. When something important was going on in Shibuya, first you check the TV shows to get the basics, then the mass market sites to see what the net was saying. Then you would go to Shibuya News for the latest information. This was the way the newspaper club, and myself specifically, would always look for information. The quality of the news wasn't the only reason that Shibuya News was, was popular. One reason was that Kei appeared to be a girl. When someone was thought to be a girl in, in real life, they got a lot more hits than anyone who was thought to be a guy. This is why my YouTube channel really never got anywhere. I'm joking, of course. Please don't hurt me. And the other reason was... This radio broadcast. Whenever there was something big she wanted to report on, she would always do an internet radio broadcast. It offered proof that she was a girl, her voice calm and pleasant to the ear. A lot of people just listened to her broadcasts. The audio from the leaky noise case that I played for Kyudusu had actually been modified by K to be easier to understand. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I think I heard about it. I chuckled a little. His glory hogging was a running joke among Nikonia News viewers. One, 
ファンタズムさんが先ほどの楽曲を発表した6年前渋谷で何が起こったか皆さんご存知ですよね Wait a minute. Why does that actually sound familiar? So, Shibuya Jishin des. Demo, Sonomani Seken on Nigiwasete Tanoa. New Generation no Kyoki to Yobareta, Renzo Kyoki Jiken desta. Was one of the female characters in Chaos Head in like a band or something? And was she like really off putting? You know, like all the other characters in that show? Or that. Actually, I, I don't know. I'm going to say show because that's what I watched. I really don't know how it is in the visual novel, and I don't want to diminish the name of Chaos Head just because I watched the shitty adaptation. I just don't know anything. <laughs> I was startled. That's right. Crap. I'd forgotten after all that had happened at the Love Hotel. No way. <laughs> In that second, the Twitter stream that was linked to the broadcast lit up. It was overflowing with comments. Ah, yes, the, the vampire er case. She does have a very soothing voice, I will admit. She, sign or she signed off in her usual way, and the broadcast ended. And something about them, them cute females, and maybe cute males as well, speaking in a language I don't understand, where it's just, you know, very soothing, calming at times. Or some shit like that. She got me. That's right. That, hy that hypothesis was why I'd first forced my way into the love hotel, excuse me. And something had happened, just like I thought. After three such incidents, it was only natural to assume that there might be a connection. The new generation madness. Nice. I actually don't know what to take from this other than like, wow, those are those are deaths. What is going to happen again? Or was it going to happen again? <laughs> I suddenly felt a pain in my cheek. I reached up and saw that blood was coming out from the side of the bandage. The cut must have opened. How? As I took care of it, the red blood on my fingers stood out. Without warning, I felt a horrible sense of dread, like I was sinking into quicksand. Usually, I love to have a mystery to solve, but now that the case was definitely real, I hesitated. For the rest of that night, I wasn't able to do any more research about the case. But here we are on fucking at channel. Uh, let's see, what's being said here? The three suspicious deaths in Shibuya this month line up with the dates of the new generation madness. A fourth death is predicted to occur on October 10th. And then there's a source. And people are losing their goddamn minds. Let us uh, just scroll through here. I don't think there's anything too important to uh, read here. I want to know more about the third death. Was it as nasty as leaky noise? Okay, you're so smart. Let's get married. I got so excited listening to Shibuya News. I fapped to her voice three times. Could do it twice more. Yeah, I kind of, you know, I hate how I stopped to read some of those. It's been six years, and it's time to drag this out again. It's the return of the new generation madness, and I can't bear it. Ah, it's uh, it's that one character from Persona 4. Oh, it's Teddy. I don't know why I was struggling to remember his, uh, his name there. This isn't our desktop either. I'm noticing that. This is not the same desktop we just saw. They have iTunes and, and Ryan. Who would have iTunes, dude? That is, like, garbage. A garbage software to have on any system. 
including the uh, the system that would probably run it best. October 1st, 2015, Thursday. The same time. Shibuya Police Station. Ah, I think we're going to go back to that investigator. I mean, you could assume that she's a student based on what she was wearing when we saw blood pouring out of her fucking eyes. ね。どうなの? <sighs> now we know two characters that don't speak. The officer sank back into her chair in resignation. Shinjo could sympathize. なるほどな. He just come to check on her a moment ago, but they'd been they've been probably doing this since yesterday. Locked in an interrogation room, cut off from the outside world, and questioned by multiple officers, most people would lose their cool. They'd start to wonder what effects their words were having and focus on every movement of the officer who was taking down notes. It wasn't hot in the room, but they'd sweat. But this girl didn't respond at all. It probably wasn't because she was used to it. If she'd ever been interrogated before, the fingerprints they'd taken would have told them who she was. あの、新庄さん。うん? To a mental hospital, you mean? It made sense. The natural assumption was that the shock of the incident had incapacitated her. Shinjo nodded as if considering it. This was the second day since the incident. If she lived in a, in a normal family environment, someone should have submitted a missing persons report by now. God damn, who is this chick? Shinjo watched the girl as he listened to her talk. But the girl didn't move a muscle. The normal ways weren't going to work then. She'd be sent to the hospital by dawn at this rate. Uh, the other officer couldn't hide her happiness as she left the room. I mean, it was pretty late. Shinjo sat down in the chair she'd been sitting in and took a good look at the girl in, uh, from the front, excuse me. She was ignoring him and still looking down at the desk. She didn't even seem to notice or care that the person in front of her had changed. Shinjo remembered his conversation with Momose. After he'd hung up, she called back in precisely three minutes, just like she'd promised. And then she'd said, My kid has a message for you. <laughs> どういう意味でするんですか。いいから早期言ってごらんなさい。それで今の新庄ちゃんのような反応をしたり、変わらず黙ったままだったりしたら、残念だけど、悲観地しか取る手段はないそうよ。もし別の反応をしたら、もう一
誰なんですかあなたは。Her words were quiet but sharp. It was the same tone of voice that Shinjo used when he was interrogating a subject. ここの刑事だ。君、名前は<笑> She seemed to be thinking about something as she stared at him. Her mannerisms were just like his own again. It was the same way a detective faced a criminal, trying to gain every scrap of information from what he could see. And then she slowly opened her mouth. Arimura Hinae. Hekyo Gakue no Gakse des. Oh. I doubt that, <laughs> but I could be wrong. I left the motorhome where I lived alone, and only then did I realize that it was evening. The sunlight must have been pouring into my room, but I hadn't noticed. I didn't really remember when I'd gone to sleep or when I'd woken up. I looked around and made sure that none of the scenery had changed, and then walked up the steps in front of me. This is a lovely place. Miyashita Park was just a, minutes, or a few minutes walk away from Shibuya Station. It was also known as Homeless Park. And this was where I lived after I left the dorm. The first floor was a huge parking structure, and the second story had a fustal, or a futsal field, and a climbing wall. It had been mostly abandoned during the recovery efforts after the Shibuya earthquake. After the quake, People who'd lost their family, or who never had any family to begin with, gathered here on Mas, or Mas, excuse me.、Uh, Matake Park, which was right next door, was supposed to be the evacuation point for this area, but Miyashita had always been a mecca for the homeless, so everyone gathered here. When people gathered, so did things. Containers filled with food, blankets, and tents. Even the trailer for a motorhome that was left behind when its owner fled Shibuya. Every part of the park was overhauled to create a place for people to live. The parking lot, the futsal field, the climbing wall, etc. And the next thing, anyone knew there was a society there that was big enough that the government couldn't force them out.、And、then some group of idiots came out to try and turn the place into temporary housing. That was shot down in less than a month. As a result, even though you can find beautifully rebuilt skyscrapers just a street away, Miyashita Park became one of Japan's biggest slums. ここれいいですか I spoke to the man who sold newspapers, magazines, and everything else as I picked up a newspaper with today's date, October the 1st, on it. He showed me the snacks and alcohol at his feet. He must have sold a lot today. There were a lot of people in the park who had enough money that they could have stayed in a capsule hotel if they wanted to. I thanked him and went to leave. ならついでに俺の分も頼む。南のまっちゃんからだっつって渡してくれ。He handed me a 1000 yen bill. I nodded, took it, and headed deeper into the park with my paper. Oh, so his name was Maddie. Nishida Park was divided into north and south halves by a road. If he said he was from the south, that must mean there was a Maddie on the north side who I hadn't met yet. The administrative office on the south side. Just like the name implied, it was where all the administration was done for Miyashita Park. It kept things peaceful between the government and the park argument,、uh, occupants, excuse me,、uh, resolved disputes between the homeless, and maintained all the facilities at the park. I knew the woman there by her face, but not by her name. I gave her the electric bill, which was due on the first of the month, along with Maddie's part. Life in the park might seem carefree and lawless from the outside, but it was actually much stricter than you'd find in some families. 
はみ出たり勝手に住み着こうとしているやつは Everyone who lived on the outer rim of the park, including me since I lived on the far south, had been asked by the management to keep an eye out for that. Da, 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 God damn. Oh, uh, I was startled but quickly nodded. I suddenly felt that they were criticizing me for hiding something. The corridor that connected the north and south ends of the park. This place looking down on Meiji Street was the one part that hadn't really changed since before the earthquake. There were cracks here and there, but the government had forbidden people. To put things here because it would ruin the view and might not be safe. I leaned up against the rail and spread open the newspaper with the setting sun shining down on me. There was a column on the front page about the Love Hotel incident, but no new information. There was nothing in the article about the girl who was found on the scene or how this could be related to what happened six years ago. Had they not figured that out yet? Or maybe they had. And they just weren't announcing it? If it had something to do with the incident six years ago, then so did Don't Look at Me and Leaky Noise. Did that mean that they weren't suicides? If the killer had driven them to suicide, then it was probably the same person behind three incidents. But was he working alone or part of a group? Or maybe people who were related somehow to the incident six years ago were killing themselves one after another. Maybe I should look at what the three cases had in common again. Oh god, dude. I don't like seeing that. Damn it. What the hell? My hand went up to the new bandage on my cheek. I rubbed it several times to make sure that it was still there. I took out my smartphone. The data I had recorded at the scene had been deleted by the police. I probably should have just counted myself lucky that they didn't take the phone itself. I'd lost my biggest clue to the case. I actually completely forgot about what he recorded. He was so fixated on that, too. Maybe this was just out of my league. Maybe it was stupid to get involved. Now that's a family.、Uh, too bad they're all dead. And then I got a call on my phone. I checked the name and hit the answer button. Hi. Yes, yes. Wonder who that was. What the fuck? Hi. Yes, yes. Hi. Yes, yes. Hi. Yes, What the fuck kind of place did we walk into? As always, the waitress's appearance and manners were a mystery to me. I bowed to her and went to my seat. Serika was there already reading a manga. She was fiddling with her Gero Froggy cell phone strap without realizing it, as usual. It really was a strange habit, and a nuisance to the people around her. Cafe Lax, the preferred hangout of the newspaper club, was just a 10 minute walk from Shibuya Station. The owner was a manga fan, and the walls were lined with the stuff. Yeah, I'm actually now seeing that. There was free Wi Fi, the prices were good, and if it wasn't crowded, you could sit there for hours as long as you bought a single drink. That's actually pretty chill, not gonna lie. The most important part was that, since it was a, in a hard to find spot, barely anybody from Hekiko knew about it. So I didn't have to worry about running into anyone I knew. As usual, there was barely anyone there. Just a single couple that appeared to be in college. I ordered my usual mountain view and sat down. I'm a Dr. P fan myself, you know. Oh, Taku! So, what is this? Huh? I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Serika went and put the manga back on the shelf, then came back and sat back down. Hey, 
これ制服のんちゃんから言われてクリーニングしといたから悪いな I took the bag containing my uniform from Serica. It was the uniform that had gotten covered with blood at the Love Hotel. I nodded. I hadn't felt like it at all. When I got up this morning, I sent both of them a text saying that I was okay. They both sent back responses almost immediately, but neither of them said much about what had happened. They probably weren't mentioning it for my sake. Okay. Actually, you know what? That kind of makes sense with the whole, you know, earthquake deal. Serica spoke in a normal tone of voice as she drank her favorite group fruit juice. She didn't seem like she was lying. And that's how she'd been since she was a kid. It wasn't that she didn't have any feelings, she just got over them very quickly. <sighs> now that she asked, I wasn't sure how to answer the question. The waitress brought me my mountain view. I nodded and took it. Okay. Was I okay? I spun the ice in my drink as I listened to the couple's irritating conversation. Serica silently waited for my answer. I knew that face. She'd been my friend since we were kids. There was no point in trying to hide it. Yeah, I, I don't think we're alright. Sarah could seem genuinely shocked. Serica raised her hand and ordered another drink. That might be true, but things were different this time. After what I'd gone through. Serica continued as if she knew exactly what I was thinking. I nodded. I just dreamed about it. I'm very confused by that character. I will continue to question everything. Serica took her glass of juice and gulped it down. Come on. Her voice was light as she drank her juice, but her words didn't feel light at all. Something other people hadn't experienced. Something different from other people. I started, or I stared at Serica's face, excuse me there. 
How much did she understand about what she was trying to say? Or what she was saying? Now, I don't even know what I'm reading. Haha. <laughs> she moved the juice away from me. I was wrong. She probably didn't realize anything. Actually, she wasn't even thinking about anything. She really was dumb. バイトに<笑><笑> I was pretty sure I told her a bunch of times. Well, whatever. Time for a lecture. Of course, I'd been in a coma for about a year after the earthquake, so I'd only investigated it after I woke up.民度の高さを訴えるものだった。これだけの震災にも関わらず、暴動や略奪などの犯罪がほとんど起きていない。I remember what they said word for word. It had left a huge impression on me. They said exactly what I was thinking. I didn't know who they were, but I admired them anyway. Those feelings were the exact opposite of all the excited, fired up people on the outside. I was different. I was different than the people who just live normal lives in Shibuya. I ripped the bandage off my cheek. The wound had closed up. My face was back to normal. I was back to normal. The case was right in front of me. I had a huge history or a mystery to investigate, and maybe some history to investigate too. I wasn't about to just be caught up in something. As a right sider, it was my job <coughs> excuse me. It was my job to jump right into the middle of all this information, right? I could feel something like excitement mixed with a sense of duty welling up inside me. Let's go get ourselves killed. I couldn't stop myself from smiling. I nodded. Serika laughed, a little strangely. And then for some reason she patted me lightly on the shoulder. I didn't know what that meant, but I started to laugh too. Serika nodded. Serika took out her Pokecom. She typed into it with a practiced hand. She seemed to be loading a video file. My god. Damn, it's getting dark. By the time I got back home, the sun had long since set, 
and it was past 8 o'clock p.m. I realized that I'd barely eaten anything since arriving at the Love Hotel, and suddenly felt very hungry, so I eaten a meal at, uh, I don't know if I want to say LAX, because that means something different, I'll just say LAX. So, Serika had followed me home. She started to glance around the room and offer her opinions on the way it was laid out. She would open drawers and be surprised even though there was nothing important inside, or look at new files about the cases and tell me their contents at a glance. She always was a little strange like that. She would be surprised by the most obvious things, but sometimes she would start showing startling insight. And wait. <laughs> she laughed another strange laugh. <laughs> That is a weird way of looking at things, but... I mean, I guess. I see, I thought. She was right. A sound came from my PC. Excuse me, the copy operation is finished. Oh. Yes. そしたら元のストレージのやつは削除してくれ。Oh man. I never know how to feel about these situations. She looked over at me while she rifled through my bookcases. Are you serious? Let's see, let's go with a, uh, let's go with a negative. Why not? Haha. <laughs> I, I don't really see the, the, uh, the downside of going into a negative. And then some information I'd found before flashed across my mind. Of course, it was from Cool Cat Press. I'd read about it in a certain special they'd run. If you put eye drops into a beer, it will make a girl feel aroused. What? At the time, I hadn't believed it. In another issue, they'd said that the eye drops in cola would make a girl go to sleep. Adding eye drops into a drink would create unusual side effects. Hold up, guys, I gotta go get some eye drops. I'd heard a rumor that was all just an urban legend, though. Uh, but what about... Or, but what would happen, excuse me, if you put eye drops into Kakonto, uh, excuse me. Uh, there was a stupid teenage girl who didn't even know what Kakonto was right in front of me. Well, I don't know what the fuck it is either. All I know is, is that it helps you not throw up. And that's information I gained from this. Should I try it? <laughs> what the fuck? I prepared two cups like it was the most natural thing in the world and poured out the Kakonto I'd made. And then, being very careful not to let Serika see me, I took the eye drops off the shelf. Now to just add a few drops of it to this, and maybe it would be enough to arouse even Serika. I tried adding a few drops. But wait a second, Cool Cat Press hadn't said anything about how much to use. So I had no idea how much it would take to get any effect. It felt like you would need more than a few drops. Okay, I just have to add the whole bottle. <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna kill her. The problem was how to make sure that Serika didn't see me. 
今はお前の分も作ってやるから座って待ってろよ本当ありがとうカッコンとって初めて飲むなセルキン did just what I told her <laughs> so easy. While she sat on the sofa, I went around to where she couldn't see me and opened the lid on the eye drops and then poured the whole bottle in. My heart felt like it was pounding fast. I tried to act normal as I handed her the cup. Oh shit. カッコントってもともと漢方薬だしそういう匂いなんだふん健康には良さそうセリカ laughed It was lucky for me that she was so stupid じゃあいただきます Bottoms up She put the cup to her lips with no hesitation And then <laughs> She started coughing <coughs> yeah, I should have seen that coming. I must have added the wrong amount. I'd have to tell her what I'd done later and apologize. <coughs> Serica wouldn't stop coughing. Her body was twisting in pain. The cup fell to the floor and spilled the cacanto everywhere. Ah, <laughs>、oh, man, I guess we really are killing her. This wasn't normal. <laughs> And then, all too suddenly, she coughed up blood. The red liquid stained the sofa, the floor, and me. <laughs> Was I not supposed to mix Kakanto and eye drops? What kind of fucking question is that? <laughs> Did I accidentally make something poisonous? I tried to pat her back when her eyes suddenly rolled up into her head. She started to spasm and shake. All I could do was watch in shock. Soon she laid down on the bed face up and stopped moving. Blood was still dripping from the side of her mouth. Well, she went to sleep, I guess. She wasn't breathing. It's not true. s e r i c a was looking at me, head tilted in surprise. There was no blood or drool dripping from her mouth, and her eyes weren't, weren't rolled back into the back of her head. s e r i c a just did what I told her. I couldn't tell if she was obedient or just didn't care. But for now, I was saved. I took a drink from the cup of Kakanto in my hands. It didn't taste like medicine. I hadn't been able to find any eye drops on the shelf, so I'd just given it to her normally. It was wrong to think about experimenting on a friend, yeah. Honestly, I feel like some negative delusions are important to make sure that we keep、uh, Takaru in check. Like in, in, like in this case, you know, let's, let's not experiment on friends. That's a good takeaway. Have him think of something very horrific like that so he doesn't make the wrong move later on. I don't know what sort of effects these positive and negative delusions will have if we choose a delusion when they come up, but I don't want to choose too many positives over negatives, you know? Sake guse no wal so a do ni kaste o shi ke do na. Demo. Was that why? Well, he did help me out a lot. Okay, Sarah could put away her Pokecom. Alright. 
I booted up the laptop next to the wall and sat down in the chair that folded onto the bed, or on into the bed. As I went to load the video file into the player's software, I happened to glance at its length. Oh, Sarah said. あの時タクが起用しなってすぐに警察が駆けつけてで私も気持ち悪くて入っちゃってたんだけどいつの間にかタクが落としたスマホを自分のポケットに入れててそれで警察に連れてかれるパトカーの中でスマホのことに気づい
I'd been fighting with the door then. And then... Hehehehe, <laughs> this fucking knocking sound, dude. My body shivered as I had gone numb. This was... I could hear it. I could hear it. The police said the surveillance cameras hadn't shown anyone else coming into the room, but I could hear it. That constant rhythmic knocking. Somehow it made me feel uneasy and scared. Someone had been on the other side of that door, and suddenly the screen moved. Why did the screen move? Oh, that's right. So he, yeah, I guess he picked up the phone and was like, oh my god, I gotta record this guy fucking dead. This was when his like priority was like towards recording for some reason. It was showing the man on the bed. The screen was blurry, but the man was almost exactly in the center of the viewfinder. Had I picked up the smartphone? I couldn't remember. No, I, I remember. In the video, I ignored Serika's voice and kept pointing the camera at the man. I could hear my own rough breathing, and I remembered how I'd felt then. And then... Then suddenly I heard a snap. That's right, his neck... His neck snapped, that happened, I was expecting it, don't worry guys. Then... I guess... red. The screen moved violently for a second, and then for a moment it showed the girl. Then the angle changed again, and it stopped moving. The screen was covered in red blood, but... What was I looking at? Or what I was looking at was probably the room's ceiling. Since it didn't move at all, this was probably where I'd passed out and dropped it. Just like before, the camera was still recording the sound. I could hear Serika vomiting, and what sounded like someone falling over. It caught the police officers running into the room. They were asking Serika what was going on. She was probably the only one there who was still conscious. Shortly after, the screen went black. Serika had probably put the phone into her pocket, just like she'd said. I could hear an irritating noise that must have been the sound of the phone, scraping the skirt's fabric. The screen stayed black, but it kept picking up the nearby sound. Then at the very end, there was a quick shot of the inside of a patrol car. I realized that at some point I'd leaned my body toward the screen. I sat back in my chair. I'd known what was going to happen, but this was still hard. To be honest, I was lucky that the phone was dropped and had a, and a lot of it wasn't clearly recorded. I didn't feel as much of an urge to vomit as I expected, but I was still sweating from a nasty, unpleasant feeling. I gulped down the last bit of liquid in my cup. I asked Serika, and then... Hmm? Weird. The whole thing was weird. Not a second of it was normal. Sarah can move the mouse to jump backward in the video. I couldn't tell whether she was tough or simply dense. Or maybe just felt like it was nothing but a video, but she advanced through the shocking scenes with no hesitation. Outside the window? I just see the fucking curtain. Uh -huh. oh. Was there something there? I could see the wall of the Love Hotel across the street from the open window. There is something there. Zoom in. Enhance. Zoom in. Enhance. I actually don't know what the fuck they're looking at. That circle right there? She hated bugs. 
Why was her first answer a bug and her second answer the sensible one? Enhance, please. I switched from my player software to my editing software and then blew up that part of the screen. I don't know, what are they looking at? I don't understand. Am I just that dense? Like, I don't know if I'm missing something. Like, this, this thing sticking out right here? I don't have my mouse pointer on. I don't know why I'm trying to point. Damn it, I couldn't make it out. But it was so far away that it was blurry. The resolution was too low. Spread its wings. What? I turned around at the loud noise. Oh god! There was a drunk man with a bottle of booze in his hand. Give me a break. Of course, no one was waiting. もっと静かに入ってきてよ。ほう、玄さん、この前はありがとうね。この前ラブホテルの事件のこと教えてくれたじゃん。おお、あ、そうだったか。まあ、どうでもいい。事件か良かったな。タクは新聞記者になりたい
But thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Chaos Child. I really am enjoying the whole mystery aspect of this. And hopefully, hopefully I really just really get into it. I guess I kind of already am really into it, but you know what I mean. It so far is a pretty fun ride. So thank you guys for watching this episode. If you enjoyed, leave a, uh, leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy shit. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one hour or so long episode. It's how I do it, man. It's how I do it. I'll see you guys next time.